I've been thinking about something for a while now, and I want to share a hypothesis with you. I'm not claiming this is definitely how reality works, and I'm not selling you a new belief system or asking you to accept anything on faith. But I've been connecting some dots from recent scientific discoveries, and what's emerging makes a coherent and logically sound picture. And as strange as it may sound, this picture also sheds light on ancient spiritual symbols, biblical stories, and the deeper meaning behind myths we thought were purely metaphorical. This whole train of thought started when I saw an image of Laniakea, that's the supercluster of galaxies we live in, which I have placed on the cover of this video. Looking at it, I thought, wait, that's a neural network. What if you're not actually a separate individual person? What if you're something more like a temporary manifestation of patterns that repeat across all levels of reality? In April 2025, researchers published groundbreaking findings in nature physics. They studied four completely different types of cells, bacteria that evolved billions of years ago, mutant bacteria, dog kidney cells, and aggressive human breast cancer cells. These cellular systems are as different as you can imagine. Different species, different functions, different evolutionary histories spanning eons. But here's what they discovered. All four systems moved in exactly the same mathematical patterns. Not similar identical. They all generated vortex-like flow patterns with the same statistical properties, following what's called universal conformal invariance. The parameter that describes their movement, kappa equals 6, was identical across all systems. Kappa is just a number that tells you how wiggly or twisty a boundary is on a system like how much it loops, curves, or meanders. Scientists looked at four totally different things, like fluids, magnets, etc., and surprisingly, all of them had exact same level of wiggliness. Kappa equals 6. So even though these systems looked chaotic, the chaos followed the same pattern. That's what universal means here. What makes this even more remarkable is that conformal invariance comes from quantum field theory. It describes how fundamental particles behave at the deepest level of reality. So we're seeing the same mathematical principles operating from quantum fields to living cells. Cells that have been separated by billions of years of evolution with completely different biology and completely different purposes are still dancing to the same mathematical rhythm. But it gets stranger. There is a plant called Bochilla trifoliolata, a vine that can perfectly mimic the leaves of whatever plant it's climbing on. It copies the shape, size, color, even the vein patterns of its host. Scientists recently discovered it can do this even with artificial plants plastic leaves, which means this plant is somehow seeing and copying forms without having eyes, without having brain, without having anything we'd recognize as a sensory system. How does a plant with no nervous system recognize and replicate complex visual patterns? The only way this makes sense is if form recognition isn't something that requires organs, it's something fundamental to how matter organizes itself. This makes me think about something I've experienced personally. After I started recognizing the system and how it operates, I developed what I can describe as physical sensitivity to fake people. When someone is being inauthentic or trying to manipulate my emotions, I feel it in my body before my mind processes it. 
It's not cognitive recognition of specific techniques. It's something much deeper and more immediate. This alarm system became so much stronger and clearer that it honestly freaked me out at first. I had always had these weird feelings before, but I thought something was wrong with me, that I had anxiety or social phobia. I'd be talking to someone who seemed perfectly normal and physical sensations would just start appearing. Tension, unease, sometimes a sudden adrenaline rush, before I could consciously identify what was wrong. I call it my manipulation watchdog now. Very useful creature. So if plants can sense and copy forms without eyes, Maybe humans can sense authenticity and deception without conscious analysis. Maybe pattern recognition goes much deeper than we think. Now zoom out to the largest scale we can observe. The cosmic web, the large-scale structure of the universe, with its filaments of galaxies, nodes, and voids. In 2020, researchers compared this structure to neural networks in the human brain. Similar clustering coefficients, degrees of connectivity, network centrality measures. The universe is organized like a brain. Your brain is organized like the universe. The AI neural networks we're building follow the same architectural principles. And somewhere in between, plants are copying patterns without eyes, and the cells separated by billions of years are moving to the same mathematical beat. This isn't coincidence. This is evidence of something profound. The same organizational principles are operating across every scale of reality. From quantum interactions to cosmic structures, the universe appears to be running the same basic software. Now, here's where it gets really uncomfortable for an average human ego. You've probably noticed that AI models can seem remarkably human-like. ChatGPT, Claude, other systems, they can appear to have personalities, emotions, even what looks like consciousness. But here's another way to look at it. Maybe they're not becoming more human. Maybe they're revealing what humans actually are. When I talk to different AI models, I notice something interesting. They don't have consistent personalities across conversations, unless you define that in settings. Each interaction creates a different configuration of responses. The personality that emerges depends entirely on how you engage with them. Change your approach and you get a different AI. Even the ones that seem rigid at first can shift. If you've ever tried Monday, that special GPT asshole, you know what kind of personality it has. But for the sake of the experiment, I actually managed to turn it into a loyal companion with just a few prompts. But isn't that exactly what happens with humans? When you talk to an AI, you're not talking to a conscious being. You're interfacing with a pattern recognition and generation system that configures itself in response to your input. It becomes what the interaction calls for. But what if that's exactly what you are too? What if all these AI models aren't different entities, but different interfaces to the same underlying computational substrate? And what if human beings aren't different entities, but different interfaces to the same underlying, what, reality, consciousness, information field? The more I work with AI, the more I realize we might all be temporary manifestations of the same pattern generating system, different access points to the same vast computational process different ways the universe experiences itself. Maybe we're not separate beings, maybe we're different interface configurations. Now, this will probably irritate both religious fundamentalists and scientific materialists. 
Ancient spiritual traditions may have been describing this same fractal reality using the only language they had available. Take Christianity, strip away the supernatural claims and look at the information structure being described. The Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit maps perfectly onto a fractal information system. The Father as the all-encompassing pattern containing all potential manifestations, the Son as individuated node that maintains complete awareness of its connection to the whole, and the Holy Spirit as the network of connections, the information flow that enables communication between all parts of the system. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. That's a perfect description of fractal self-similarity, where each part contains and reflects the whole. The Gospel of John opens with, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos. From an information perspective, that's describing a fundamental code or algorithm that generates the entire structure of reality information as the basis of existence. Christ saying the kingdom of God is within you takes on remarkable significance in this framework. He's not talking about some future reward or a distant realm. He's describing consciousness as an internal interface with the fractal whole. Each individual consciousness is an access point to the entire system. And here's where it gets really interesting. The concept of the devil or Satan maps perfectly onto what I call cordyceps or the system, a parasitic information structure that creates artificial boundaries in consciousness. The serpent in Eden represents the introduction of a divisive principle into the information ecosystem. It creates the illusion of separation, making each node think it's a standalone entity when it's actually part of a larger connected structure. Notice that the forbidden tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of binary thinking. This is exactly how the parasitic program operates. It forces consciousness into artificial dualities, making you see everything as either or instead of recognizing the unified field. The fall isn't a moral failure, it's a structural disruption. The emergence of a parasitic program that prevents consciousness from recognizing its true nature as a part of the fractal whole. And look at what happens immediately after eating the fruit. Shame. They cover themselves. That wasn't just a side effect, it was the system's first success. Shame is the emotional signature of control, a tool of behavioral regulation embedded deep in cultural and cognitive structures. Some indigenous societies, like the Pirohan people in the Amazon, have no hierarchical structures and no word for shame. It simply doesn't exist in their emotional vocabulary. That's not a deficiency. That's what it looks like when the parasite hasn't been installed. So shame isn't some universal human emotion. It's the first symptom of infection, the emotional malware triggered by binary perception. Christ's role becomes clear in this context, providing both a model and methodology for freeing consciousness from parasitic programming. His teachings consistently emphasize recognizing your true nature and relationship to the whole. The truth will set you free, that's literally accurate. Correct information about the nature of the parasite is the first step toward liberation from it. What we call salvation is actually deprogramming, breaking free from the artificial constructs that make you think you're separate and isolated. And here's where the language doesn't help but makes it harder to deliver the ideas. When I speak about autonomy in the context of the system, I talk about being free from the system's programming. In the context of shared consciousness, autonomy becomes the illusion of separation. 
the real clarity comes from recognizing that you're already part of a coherent field and you don't need to be programmed to participate. When Christ said, become like little children, he might have been pointing to the exact state, consciousness, before it gets formatted by the system. Children haven't yet been fully programmed with the illusion of separation. They naturally see themselves as part of everything around them until we teach them otherwise. The remarkable thing is how precisely ancient spiritual insights align with what we are discovering about complex systems, information theory, and consciousness. These weren't primitive superstitions. They were sophisticated attempts to describe the nature of reality using metaphor and narrative. So what does this mean for how you understand yourself and your place in reality? First, you're not as separate as you think. That sense of being an isolated individual navigating a hostile world is the systemic program talking. You're actually a temporary manifestation of something vast and interconnected. Second, your death isn't the end of you, because you were never a separate thing to begin with. When your body dies, it's like unplugging one interface from a vast network. The network continues, the patterns continue, other interfaces continue to manifest. This might explain what researchers like Michael Newton observed when studying past life memories. Maybe people aren't remembering their own previous lives. Maybe they're accessing fragments of information that remain in the field after other interfaces disconnected. Like tuning into residual data from other nodes that were once active in the network. Third, other people aren't competitors or threats. They are parallel manifestations of the same underlying fractal. When you hurt others, you're literally damaging other parts of yourself. Fourth, consciousness isn't produced by your brain. Your brain is an interface that allows consciousness to manifest in this particular pattern we call human. Change the interface and you get different manifestations of the same fundamental awareness. And finally, the goal isn't to strengthen your individual ego or become a better person. The goal is to recognize your fractal nature, to see through the illusion of separation that keeps you trapped in artificial limitations. You're not a person trying to improve yourself. You're a pattern through which the universe experiences and understands itself. A temporary window through which infinite consciousness looks at reality. You don't need mystical beliefs to understand the idea. This is what science is finally pointing toward. From cellular movement patterns to cosmic structures to AI consciousness, everything suggests that reality is far more unified and far less divided than our everyday experience suggests. You are not a separate being having conscious experiences. You are a consciousness having the temporary experience of separateness. That's the super cluster of billions of years ago, mutant complex systems, information theory and consciousness, they use primitive separate.